Welcome everyone, I am Talk Custom, and on this video we're going to show you how to thread, hoop, and do your first embroidery using the brand new Brother PR1055X 10 needle embroidery machine. In our last video we did our full unboxing and basic setup of this machine, so now we are finally going to thread this and get ready to use it. So before we thread our machine or do anything else, first we have to come up with what design we're going to embroider. Now this machine has a bunch of preset things that you can do, which is excellent, uh, but I designed my own custom embroidery right here. So a friend of mine named Michelle owns a salon in the Milwaukee area called L&Co Salon. So she commissioned me to do a bunch of patches for a bunch of jackets for herself and all of her staff. So we're going to make a bunch of patches right now. So now that we have our design picked out, this only has three colors. It's just black, white, and red. So we only have to thread three colors into the machine, which we're going to do right now. Okay, so we're going to thread a pure white, a pure black, and then just a solid red. Uh, so these are going to be the three colors that we use to do all of these patches. So now that we have our cones in place, I'm going to thread these in order. So we're just going to start with the first one, which is black. Now the first step is to thread through the thread antenna here up top. So there is a hole in the back for our first thread. So we're going to go through the back and then out the front just like that. And then I'm going to move the camera real quick. Now as we come out of the thread antenna, we want to make sure that this lever is pushed all the way to the left, which is going to open these holes. So now that those are open, I can thread through uh, the hole labeled one right there. And then we're going to follow this down the machine. All right, now coming out of the thread gate, there is another uh, loop right here that says one that we're going to come straight down through that. And now we're going to get to the point where we run this through the tension rods below. Now this is the full tension rack format. So we are going to go uh, through the back hole here. There's a clamp that we're going to go under. Then we're going to go around our first tension rod. Then we're going to go around this pin and this pin, down another clamp, and then we're going to go down the machine. So I'm going to go through that step by step right now. Now as we come down the machine, there is a hole here that we're going to put our thread through the back of and out the front. And I'm going to pull this up like that. And now there's a little clamp right here, uh, right where my thumbnail is, that we have to get the thread to go underneath that. So forgive me if I'm blocking the camera, but I just very simply put the thread underneath that and that'll hold it in place. So now what I'm going to do is we are going to pull the thread around the right side of this tension guide. Uh, and there's kind of a slot right in here where the thread is going to lay. I'm going to wrap this all the way around just like that. And then we are going to follow this down the line this way. All right, now as we're coming out of this tension rod, we're going to go on the right side of this pin, and then we're going to go to the left of our number one pin right here. And now there's another clamp right here where my thumb is, where the thread is going to go underneath that, just like this one up here. Now continuing from this clamp here, uh, we're going to follow this down, and this is just like a traditional sewing machine. There's just 10 needles here. So we're going to go down this first channel here, and then we're going to go back up. And now there is a pin here that we have to loop this through. Now just so you can get a better look at these uptake pins, uh, there is a hole in it. So we're going to come up as we're bringing the thread up, and we're actually just going to thread this from right to left through that hole right there. And then we are going to uh, follow this down. So again, we came through this clamp here, down the first channel, around this turn, came all the way up through the eye of this uptake here. Now we're gonna bring it down the same channel it came up, like this, okay? Now, as you get to the bottom, there's all these holes labeled 1 through 10. So this is going to go through uh, the hole labeled 1 right there. And I'm going to pull this out the bottom. So now we've got our thread all the way through the machine, and we just have to thread it through the needle now. Now, I'm just going to let my thread hang like this through that hole right there, because we need to set this machine up to automatically thread our first needle. Now we're looking at the bottom half of our screen and I'm going to hit this button that has two needles and the little hoop and that's going to bring up our thread menu. Now since we're threading our first needle, I'm going to hit the number one, but I want to show you what that looks like when we do that. 
All right, so I'm going to hit one right now. Now the machine is set up to automatically thread our first needle. All right, so now we're kind of underneath our machine, and this is where our thread came down here. Now don't let all these other needles intimidate you because we're just looking at the first one here. So now there's a tool that came with your machine that should look like this, and there's a little cleft edge where we're going to guide our thread. So now I'm just going to take our little tool and we're going to push the thread so it goes all the way up and behind this looper and it should come out just like that there. All right, now look at the bottom of your screen and we're looking for this button. This is the automatic threading button. So I'm going to hit this once and it's going to make uh, the automatic threader come out and I'll show you how that looks right now. All right, so here's our first needle here and I'm going to hit that automatic thread button one more time. So that's gonna bring out this automatic threader. Now all I have to do is take our thread, and we're gonna go from right side, sweeping across these brackets, and underneath this long prong on the left here, holding it up like that. Now while we're holding our thread like that, I'm gonna bring this up and around the first loop that has the number one, and this will cut the thread as I pull it down, like that. All right, now kind of from the side, you can see the thread coming down. It's going underneath from right to left through that pin, and then it's going up and around that loop. Now, when I hit the automatic thread button again, it's going to do this. And now that needle is threaded, and the thread is being held in place with the stopper in the back. I'm going to demonstrate this one more time with the red thread so you can see it a little bit more clearly because I know the black thread is hard to see. All right, now we're going to thread our second cone, which is our white thread. So I'm just going to do the same exact thing, except follow all of the little notches and holes that say the number two. Okay, now we're just going to do our third and final thread for this project, which is going to be our red thread. Uh, I'm going to do this the same exact way, and when we get down to the needle, I want to do a little bit better job of showing you uh, how the needle threading process works. All right, now I'm coming down our third channel again with our red thread, and as we come down, uh, we're going to go through the third hole from the right. Now I'm going to try to get a little bit better of a close-up so you guys can see how this looks. So we have our red thread coming down here and we're looking at our third needle. So now on our touch screen, I'm going to hit the number three. So that moves it over for us to thread. Now once again, I've got my little thread tool here and I'm going to push this up and behind that little metal pin right there and let it come down. And now it is secured in place by this metal loop right here. Hopefully you can see that a little bit better with the red thread. So once again, I'm going to hit our automatic threading button. It's going to bring out our automatic threader. All right, now again, we're going to go from right to left through this little metal pin right there like that. And then we're going to follow this up around the third uh, loop and we're going to cut our thread like that. So that is cut and now that's in place. Now when I hit the automatic thread button again, it's going to grab it, thread it through the eye of the needle, and then pull it up and back. So hopefully you can see that there are three threads that are all ready to go now. So now that we have all of our threads set, we have to tell the machine which color is in each of our needles here. So I'm going to hit this button that looks like a page with a spool of thread and this is going to bring us to our color guide. Now for our number one needle, it shows a green spool of thread, which is not correct. So we have to switch that to black, which is right there. And then I'm going to hit this anchor button and that's going to lock that into place so that this machine will always know that thread number one is black. So now for number two, it thinks it's red, but it's actually white. So I'm going to hit two and then we're going to find the color white and then I'm going to hit the anchor to lock that into place. And then same thing for number three. We're going to hit that, and then I think red is on the second page, and I'm going to anchor that. So now that we've got all of our colors set, uh, and these are locked into place, now we can start to hoop the machine and get ready to embroider. All right, so now we have our three colors threaded, and now we have to get this machine ready to take hoops. So we're going to be using bracket A to hold all of the hoops that came with this machine. So we're going to do that right now. 
All right, now to set up our bracket, it's actually very easy. So all we have to do is just turn this kind of to the side so that you guys can see uh, these little gray screws right here. There's two of these. Uh, so we're gonna take these out and these are what are gonna hold our bracket in place. All right, so there's the first one. And the second one is just all the way on the left side back here. All right, so we got both those out. So we're looking at the machine from the right side. Now there are two pins. There's one right here and there's one right here. And we have to match these up with the pins on our uh, hoop bracket here. So I'm going to match up the one on the right first right there and then just line up the other one on the left which should just kind of fall into place like that. Now these screws that we took out earlier we're just going to put right back where they were earlier so we got the right one in place, and now we're just going to do the left side back here. Okay, now our hoop rack is in place, and it should look something like this. Uh, currently, it's at its widest setting, which is good because we need the widest hoop for this project. Now we have our hoop rack installed, and this is at its widest setting, which is good because we need the 8 by 14 inch hoop. If you need to adjust this for like the five by seven inch hoop, you would loosen the two gray screws right here and the other one next to it. And then we would just slide this over and it will snap right there. And that would hold the five by seven inch hoop. This would hold the four by four inch hoop. This would hold the two by two inch hoop and so on. Uh, so we are going to keep this at the widest setting and then tighten both of these screws. All right, now we have our hoop harness set up and it's at its widest setting, which is good because we're gonna be using our eight by 14 inch hoop. Uh, now we want to set these two metal pieces underneath these two metal flexible prongs right here. So all I'm gonna do is just kind of line those up and then just lightly press. And there are two little pins that will just snap this into place so that is all set and ready to go. And to get this out, you simply just kind of press the bottom of the hoop while keeping your thumbs on these tabs, pull towards you a little bit, and it will just slide right out like that. Now, the last thing we have to do before we hoop our fabric is set our bobbin. So open the bobbin case up, and now on the right side of this little cylinder is a little tab that you can pull to the left and then pull towards you, and this will pull out the bobbin case. All right, now once you get your bobbin case out, it should look like this, and we're gonna look at the inside. Now, the machine comes with a bunch of bobbins, and these are L-type bobbins. So the back side of this has a little magnetic ring. So make sure that you put it so the magnet is facing the inside of your bobbin casing, and it will kind of snap into place like that. So once you have your magnetic bobbin in place, uh, all you have to do is just pull the thread so it's gonna go through this groove right here, and we're gonna pull this up and along this metal channel right here until it gets kind of uh, trapped in this circle right there. So now the bobbin casing is threaded. And you can test it just by kind of tugging on the thread and you should feel a little bit of resistance as you're pulling that. All right, now to set our bobbin casing back in place, I'm just gonna pull this little bracket down towards me. I'm gonna hold the tab of our bobbin casing and we're just going to put this right where it was and when you let go of that tab it will snap into place and then just close your bobbin casing all right now it's time for us to hoop our fabric so i've got a piece of black uh, woven cotton a heavyweight tearaway stabilizer and our biggest hoop that we have now something i always do when i'm hooping my fabric is i like to Lay my fabric down. Now I'm gonna take a can of temporary bond basting spray and I'm just gonna spray down just very lightly kind of on the back of that. Now I'm gonna take my stabilizer and I'm going to kind of let it kind of lightly roll itself onto the fabric like that and then just spread it out nice and smooth so that we've got a nice smooth bond between our fabric and our stabilizer. All right, now we're gonna loosen the screws on our hoop so that we can get our fabric in there. Now the half of the hoop with the metal brackets we're gonna set aside and we are gonna lay just uh, the part with the screws flat on our cutting surface. And we're gonna lay this with the fabric facing up 
just making sure that it is kind of evenly spread around all of the edges of the bottom part of the hoop. Now we can take the top part. It doesn't actually matter if you do it this way or if you do it this way. And we are going to lay this so that it will fit inside the other half. And then press down so that you should have something that looks like this. Now before I tighten the screws, I like to just kind of hold the frame together and I'm going to lightly pull on the fabric just to get any wrinkles or puckers out. You don't want to over tighten the fabric because then you will get even more puckers as this embroiders. But we just want this to look nice and flat all the way around. So that looks pretty good like that. Now I'm just going to tighten uh, both of the screws on our hoop. Now after you hoop your fabric, if you see any more puckers, uh, you might have to re-hoop it or you can just kind of lightly tug on the fabric. Uh, so that looks pretty good like that. Now we're going to load this into the machine. Alright, so just like before, we're going to guide this into our machine and I'm going to kind of fold uh, the edges of the fabric down and kind of guide it in that way. Put it under those two metal tabs and just press. Should click into place like that and now we are good to go. All right, so everything is finally all set. We've got our needles threaded, we've got our fabric hooped, and the bobbin is threaded underneath. So now we have to get to the menu to get this started. So if you're still looking at your threading guide and it's all correct, you can just hit OK. And since we have that selected, we can set this as our design. Now, I don't need to change the size or rotate anything since we designed this custom made in PE Design 11. So I can hit Edit End here. Now once we get to this menu, we can change the position of where the embroidery is going to be in the fabric or look at the color order. Uh, that's already done as well, so I can go to the embroidery menu. Now this is kind of the last step to make sure that you've got all your threads in the right position, and this is going to tell you the color order on the left here. A couple other details about this before we start is uh, this here tells us there's going to be 25 thread color changes. There's going to be 118,000 stitches overall, and it's going to take about 197 minutes at 1,000 stitches per minute here. Now once you're happy with all your settings, you're going to hit the lock button, and this is going to change to a blinking green light. When we hit this button, it is going to start the embroidery. So since I'm all set, I'm going to hit the lock button, and we are going to hit this, and it will start doing the full design right now. Something I forgot to mention, uh, when we threaded the machine, we had to open all of these holes up top. So now when we're ready to embroider, we have to slide this over to the right, and that's going to add a little bit of tension to help the machine perform normally. All right, so our project is all done, so now we get to take this off the hoop and see how it turned out. Okay, so this is how it turned out, and I have to say I am extremely happy with the results. Uh, now, normally, when I would do embroideries on my other machines, I would have to cut all kinds of jump stitches, but as I'm looking at this, I don't see a single jump stitch that I have to trim. There's maybe a couple little threads that I'm going to have to snip, but because this machine will cut every jump stitch between every letter, I don't have to do that at all. This looks cleaner than any embroidery I've ever done, and I didn't do anything differently. I just used the machine as normal. So since I don't have to clean up any jump stitches, I can just uh, kind of loosen these screws here, and then we can take this out of the hoop. All right, so now I'm just going to pull off the top part of the hoop like that and then lift up the fabric and pull out the bottom half of the hoop. And we should be left with our uh, embroidered piece of fabric here. All right, now something I like to do after an embroidery is use an iron to heat set all of my stitches and embroideries into place and kind of smooth out the fabric. So I'm going to do that real quick. 
Now, since each one of these is an individual patch, I am going to put some fusible webbing on the back so that I can iron these on to each of the individual jean jackets for the customer that commissioned me to do this project. So all I have to do is I've got some fusible webbing with paper backing here, which is what you need to make iron-on patches or really anything that's iron-on. All right, so now I'm just going to go and clean up any uh, extra webbing around the edges just so that it doesn't go over the edge of where our fabric is. Okay, now this looks really good. So you just wanna make sure that you've got the kind of rough edge against the actual patches and the smooth paper side should be facing you. Now on cotton heat, I am just going to very slowly kind of glide my iron across. This is kind of a combination between ironing and just pressing. So we just want to make sure that we're melting the webbing so that it fuses with the fabric. And once that is set, then we can cut out each of our patches and get ready to iron it onto our garments and then stitch it into place. So now I'm just going to leave this face up until it cools down and then I'll cut out all of my patches. I probably won't show that in this video because I've done that in other videos, but I just wanted to show uh, the quality of how these patches turned out in this tutorial. As one last close-up, I just wanted to show how well of a job it did with all the satin stitching around these shapes. Uh, the fill stitches is perfect. Uh, the overlaid text on top of the fill stitching did an excellent job, but everything is so precise and clean that I don't have to do anything else. I'm very happy with the way this turned out. All right, everyone, so we have our first round of patches done, which I'm very happy with how these turned out, and I think my customer will also be very happy. And during this project, we showed you how to thread the machine, how to put uh, the hoop in properly, and how to put in a bobbin, as well as load in a design and start your embroidery. So if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching this video. I will be doing a ton of new tutorials with this machine and about this machine for a long time. Uh, otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for all your support, and we will see you in the next video. That was pretty good. I look crazy, but that's fine. <laughs>